Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Today is the 31st lesson on the book of <coughs> Shaykh Al-Bani Rahimahullah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's prayer described, <coughs> page 63. Uh, tonight is now 17th of Jumadul 1438, the sub-chapter, sub-section of the second rakah. When he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got up for the second rakah, he would commence with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Surah Al-Fatiha without pausing. Is that where we started here? Yes? We, didn't, we did that really before. And we, we mentioned Abdullah Ibn Umar that he used to stand on his fist, yes? No. We just did that one before. <coughs> Uh, the subsection before the second rakah, supporting oneself yes. with the hands on yes. raising for the next rakah. Next, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam <coughs> would get up from the second rakah, supporting himself on the ground. That's also, it. That's it. there's no one Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salam wa ala ashraf al-mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ala al-tani ahdaru min al-deen. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he gets up to the second rak'ah, he would depend upon his hands. And the dependence on his hand will be shown in the following hadith. And here, the depending upon the hand is not because of illness or because of age. Abdullah ibn Umar, who used to stand <coughs> to the following rak'ah, depending on his hands, and he used to say, this is from the Sunnah, and it is not because of old age. So he used to say, Allah ibn Umar, that this is from the Sunnah, and it is not because of old age, or incapability, or I'm not capable, or because of, you know, he is physically <clears throat> uncapable. It's not because of that. So he used to say that, this is from the Sunnah. And that would give you more support. So you start with, putting the hands on the ground and then lift up your knees and then your body. This is the way to do it for adults and young, for agiles and people who are not. <coughs> so I would like to uh, now after does the second hadith, they will demonstrate. Go ahead. <coughs> Also, he وسلم, would clench his fists during prayer, supporting himself with his hands when getting up. So he would, he says what? <coughs> he وسلم, would clench his fists. The, the word here in use in Arabic, Ya'jin. Ya'jin is to make the do. I don't know if you've seen the woman making the do. Making the do, the women they put it and then they flatten it with their fist. So it's a fist. This is the ajr. <coughs> this hadith is to be authentic. And that gives the person time and support. Better than the person who jolts himself, you know, jolting like this in order to stand up. So let's just understand the difference between the jolting and the calmness in the way to get up to the second rakah. So I would like a person who is, let me just ask you do you be, yes, so. Can you sit in the front here? Yeah. Tell us how to stand up from the second. You yourself, can you? Yeah. My brother, you, you. Well, I'm not lost, I don't know. SubhanAllah. So, can you just, yes. Show me now, you're gonna go sit down. You're gonna sit down. Now you're gonna stand up. To the second one. How do you stand up? Show us. Very well done. Sit down again. Show us the fist that you have done. Okay, can you just look at the vertical of the fist? Okay, the fist is vertical. You could make the fist horizontal as well. No, 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 no. the fist horizontal, yes. Now, which one is better for you? This way. Okay. Well, like this way, it will not be described as making the door. The women, they don't make the door like that. But there is maybe. But this is the way. 
So try to do it. Have you got used to it, maybe? That's why. Get up. Okay. So why you, are you, are you, are you you're not uh, comfortable? No, no, it's not. Uh, oh. Ah, that's why. Okay, I could, no, I'm sorry about that. No, no, sorry. Right, so <clears throat> now, would you be, if you've got a back problem, I don't want to make you jolt tonight. I don't want you to do, to do the one without that. Would you be able to do that? No. Try, but don't break your back. But this is the people what they do. Go, go the down. And this is what the people will do. Don't use the hand at all. Doesn't he look like a camel? Doesn't he look like a camel? The way he's doing it. And I'll tell you, it's like, like, is it really hurting, isn't it? Well, okay. Can I just ask another person, you, because you're yeah, younger, Zakalaka, do that wrong one. The wrong movement, but slow motion. Okay. Yes, that's the proper camel. That's the camel. See, the camel does like this, which is we're not supposed to imitate the camel. Again, please. Exactly. No, look. Camel exactly. Nick movement. MashaAllah. In the old man, will not be able to do that. It's impossible for him to do that because he needs support. So that's now the making the door. The door, which is ajun for salah. Right, so the ajun, you could do it. The vertical one, but the better one is what? The horizontal. If you get used to it, the horizontal one is better than the, this vertical one because you normally like that. So, this is Ajin for Salah, it's being done whether you sit down with everybody, whether you are able or not able. This is the Sunnah of the Prophet. There's a note now regarding a hadith which is unauthentic that is being used by those people. When they make this jolting movement, go ahead. <coughs> Footnote. <coughs> Footnote number seven is Abu Ishaq al Harhabi with a uh, faultless sanad. And its meaning is found in Al Bayhaqi with a Sahih sanad. Uh, as for the hadith, he, he وسلم, used to get up like an arrow, not supporting himself with his hands is mudur, fabricated, and all narrations of similar meaning are weak, not authentic, and I've explained this in Silsila al-Hadith al daifa 562, 929, and 968. Go ahead. <coughs> it is not good, That's it. You sure? <coughs> okay, if you haven't got that for now, the other one doesn't mean, because uh, I wanted to explain to you is that <coughs> That scholar who did actually <coughs> object on the Sheikh Al Albani authenticating this hadith, but because you haven't got it, I'm not going to elaborate on it. So, your book, I'll leave it on. Anybody got it in this book? Arabic? And that? This is Sheikh Bakr al Uzayd. Now, go to the following one. So, the second rakah. Just follow up when you finish. I don't know what you, what you finish. Just follow up. The second rakah. When he وسلم, got up for the second rakah, he would commence with all praise to Allah. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Rabbil Alameen. Without... We would start with Alhamdulillah, not all praise to Allah. <laughs> Translation <laughs> which. Start with Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And uh, without pausing. pausing. There's a note on the pause. <clears throat> The Muslim and Abu Awana, the pause <coughs> negated in this hadith could be a pause for reciting an opening supplication and not include a pause for reciting the istiada, or it could be <coughs> wider in meaning than that. I find the former possibility more convincing. There are two views among the scholars regarding the istiada, and we regard the correct one as being that it is to be said in every raka'ah. And the detail of this, <coughs> I'll give it in Al-Asr. <coughs> right. <coughs> Al-Isti'ada, question. What is the rule regarding to make Isti'ada in the first Raka? Put your finger up for you. To make Isti'ada the first Raka. That is, when you start, Allahu Akbar, Do <coughs> Al-Istiftah. Do you want to start now? <coughs> With the Fatiha, the Isti'ada. Follow. Obligatory. Obligatory. <coughs> And that's the same of most of the scholars. What is the rule regarding saying the isti'ada, isti'ada in the second, the third, and the fourth, if there's a fourth, or if there's a third, in the following account? 
What is the rule of saying isti'adah? No. Recommended? <coughs> recommended. We have a different among the scholars. The correct opinion is obligatory. Isti'adah is obligatory in every raka. <coughs> because each raka is an entity. It's a unit on its own. It has every raka has own fatiha. Because fatiha is all the time there, then basmala also and also the isti'ad. <coughs> and as Muhazm had said, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنِ فَاسْتَعِدْ بِاللَّهِ If you recite the Qur'an, then make isti'ad. Where is the proof to say that that isti'ad is not compulsory? Also, <coughs> as we have established, it is compulsory in the first rak'ah. We will not agree with Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah when he says that it is only compulsory in the first rak'ah and it's not compulsory in the following rak'ahs because he says that those rak'ahs are one unit altogether because the separation between the first rak'ah's recitation and the second rak'ah is only adhkar and remembrance and that will not be a separation but this is not right because there's a separation of the movements and subhanAllah <coughs> and here I want to indicate this issue it's very important that Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah when he says this is compulsory in every raka he also says that this is the opinion of Abu Hanifa so now we are with Abu Hanifa against whom? Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah so this is Abu Hanifa's opinion to make isti'ala in every raka just like it's compulsory for him to recite the Fatiha but it's not a pillar, remember the, the, the Hanifa is not a pillar the Fatiha, it's a compulsory <laughs> it's compulsory also to read <clears throat> the isti'ala according to Abu Hanifa and the two students of his the main students of his so that is what we believe and that is there there is nothing strong except for ishtihad that is to oppose that we have the ayah and we have as well the proof for the first rakah so there is no difference for the first and the second who makes a difference you have to bring a proof for us to say there's a difference between that first rakah and the second rakah each rakah has isti'adah it has bas- basmala it has fatiha so it is an entity and it's supposed to have the same thing as the first rakah now we'll, as well will support that the following statement. Go ahead. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam would perform his raka exactly, this raka exactly as he performed the first, except that he would make it shorter than the first as before. Right. So now we come just the last thing to tackle, which is that in that hadith which he had just read before, that he would start with Alhamdulillah and he would not be having a pose. Now, he would start with Alhamdulillah, and there is no pause. But you know that Alhamdulillah is the one with what? Loud. So before that, there is something which is not loud. What is that? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And also Al-Isti'ala. Al-Isti'ala. And Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It's a light pose. It is not being mentioned because it's nothing compared with the pose of Al-Isti'ala that Abu Hurairah had asked about. So the isti'ala and the basmala is two seconds. But the other one takes about 10 to 15 seconds, which is the dua al siftah, especially the long Allahumma ba'id bayni wa bayna khatayi wajjahtu wajjahi lati fata'a sunnati wa ta'ala. So all of that was not in the second. So he says that the first rak'ah, similar to the second rak'ah, sorry, the second rak'ah, similar to the first rak'ah, except that there is no long pause, which is Dua al-Siftah, and it's shorter than the second rakah in general. He makes the second rakah shorter than the first in general. But you know for a fact there are times where he made the, what? The second longer than the first. When he recites, for example, Sabbi Isma Rabbika al in the first, and Hal Ataka Hadil Rashi in the second, Hal Ataka Hadil Rashi is longer in recitation than, and more verses than Sabbi Isma Rabbika al <coughs> I used to say myself that isti'ala was to be recommended in the second, the third, and the fourth. 
I'm more inclined now after studying and making more studying that to say that that it is it's actually compulsory. <coughs> going along with our Sheikh Rahmatullah Ali in that. So coming now to the compulsion. The obligation of reciting Surah Al Fatiha in every rak'ah. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered the one who prayed badly to recite Al-Fatiha in every rakah when he said to him, after ordering him to recite it in the first rakah, then do that throughout your prayer, in one narration, in every rakah. And he also used to say, <coughs> there is recitation in every rakah. <coughs> so there is a recitation in every rakah. I would support what we have said. It's a, an entity of its own. So we recite the Fatiha, if we are behind the Imam, we said that it is, in the, it is, if it is loud recitation, like for example, the two rakah of the Fajr, first two rakah of the Isha, first two rakah of the Maghrib, then the recitation of the Imam would suffice. But if it is silent recitation, whether you are, you are your Imam or you are on your own or behind the Imam, silent recitation, then you must recite the Fatiha. But let's say that you are behind the Imam, and you forgot to recite the Fatiha. What is the rule regarding this person? We know that if the person is in his own and he forgot to recite the Fatiha, then that unit is invalid. Okay? Because the Fatiha is what? A pillar. But if you are behind the Imam, the Fatiha is a pillar, but because the Prophet وسلم, he said in general, Man kana lahu Imam, faqira'atu Imam lahu qira'a. And also, he did not say whether it's obligatory in the loud or not the loud. There's another hadith, he who does not recite the Fatiha in the prayer, then his prayer is behind the Iman. That tells us definitely that the person, if he forgot behind the Imam, we implement the hadith, Al Imam Wamim. The Imam is to be a guarantor. So, if you forgot, then your prayer is okay, but if you did not, forget but you did it deliberately then your prayer is invalid that unit is invalid so if you're behind the imam if you did a mistake that imam will cover for that mistake Allahu Akbar. now so there's a small note about the fatiha that jabir ibn abdullah Ragalan, who said he who prays the in which he does not recite the mother of the quran has not prayed except behind an imam related by Malik. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, that's not, not what I've just supported what I just said just a moment ago. Now, the first tashahud. Uh, I would, if you want to go further, you could go in the majmu'ah as well, remember now, and that would give you more insha'Allah. Father, the first tashahud. Next, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would sit for tashahud after finishing the second rakah. In a two rakah prayer, such as fajr, he Such as fajr, this is from the ishtihad of Shaykh al -Albani. This is from the Ishtihad of Sheikh al-Albani because Sheikh al-Albani adopts the opinion that if the person, he is in the second rak'ah and there's a tashahud, whether this tashahud is followed by another tashahud or this is the last tashahud, then he would make iftirash. So this is from the understanding of the Sheikh Rahmatullah. Go ahead. <clears throat> if a two rak'ah prayer such as Fajr <clears throat> so in a two rak'ah prayer such as Fajr, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would sit muftarishan <coughs> as he used to sit between the two sajda and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would sit in the first tashahud similarly in a three or four rakah prayer my dear boy so okay just iftirash which is like between the two sajda he says the two sajda remember there's two positions can you show us the two positions between the two sajda everybody look please i want to see you <laughs> And uh, take off your discussion just to see your foot. So this is the first one between the two sajda. This is not the one that you use for tashahud. Second one, very well done. When you're sitting on the left foot and your right is up and your toes pointing to the qibla. So these are the two, and, but no, no, no. This is the one that you use for tashahud. He says, Sheikh al Albani, the tashahud, which is the middle one, I mean, not the last one, the middle one. Uh, which is like <clears throat> second, okay, or the second of, of a three rakah, or a second of four rakah. Also, Sheikh al Bani, he says that you use this in the tashahud of 
a prayer that has got only one tashahud, just like the fajr. You understand that? So even if the tashahud is the last one, okay, even if the tashahud is the last one and is the only one, then you make this iftirash. You only make the tawarruq, which we're going to explain, in the prayer that has got two tashahud in the second tashahud. So if you do the tawarruq in the second tashahud, or a prayer has got what? Two tashahud. And in the prayer of the taraweeh, there is one prayer, you could, you could turn facing me, inshallah. In the taraweeh, there is one of the options of the prayers where there is two tashahud in that prayer. Where when you pray, for example, the seven rak'ah altogether, or nine rak'ah altogether. You sit in the seventh, and you make the what? The eighth, two tashahud. You sit in the eighth, and you make as well tashahud in the ninth. So you do either seven rak'ah together, or nine rak'ah together. In that case, in that taraweeh, if the imam has done it, or you've done it yourself, uh, you, or you with it, doesn't matter at all, yeah. you could you make the first tashahud, which is iftirash, and the second tashahud, which is tawarruq. Tawarruq is, can you show us the tawarruq, please? Look at the tawarruq, which is that. <clears throat> the tawarruq, no, this is it called iqa'a, by the way. The tawarruq, you know, the last tashahud, the last tashahud, you remember? Second tashahud, tawarruq. The, the left foot goes underneath your right foot. What do you do in the second tashahud? No, no. Show him the shirt. Okay, sorry, show him the shirt. That's the tatawar look in the second. Can I just see that? I can't see him. Go forward, go forward. Go forward so I could see him. Go forward, yes. Uh, that's what tashahud, uh, sorry, tawar look, which is in the tashahud, the second one of a prayer has got more than one tashahud. So this is the second tashahud. Could you show me as well another type of tawar look? Yeah, put that on the top. That's it. So this is on the top of it. You can't see it like this, you have to get up. You can't see it like that. So it's either this or the wrong easy one. Show the easy one underneath. Okay, that's the tashahud. But put please your left onto your thigh and straight your left hand onto your thigh. Look. Onto the thigh like that, onto the uh, knee, yeah? And straight. Just to make him straight. See? That will put him straight. See, he's straight, he's not leaning to the side. So this is called tawarrah. So uh, the scholars regarding the second tashahud of a prayer has got more than one tashahud. We have Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, and Imam Shafi. They agree upon this. And Imam Malik agrees upon the last one. But Imam Malik he says tawarruq in all the prayers. There's no there's no tiraj. You know that one he's done, he's done, just called tawarruq. Imam Malik says tawarruq. And that depending upon a hadith, which is more authentic. But Imam Shafi'i differs from the other Imams, which is Imam Ahmad, and Imam Malik, and Imam Abu Hanifa. That is, in a prayer which has got only one tashahud, like the two sunnah, or the fajr prayer, he differs from them. <coughs> He وسلم, also ordered the one who prayed badly, <clears throat> as saying to him, When you sit in the middle of the prayer, then be calm, spread your left thigh, and perform the shahud. I'm going to just uh, uh, roll these a hadith, then we will come to what Imam Shafi says. So he says here, if you sat into that middle of the prayer, <clears throat> middle means what? The shahud. Prayer has got more than the shahud. The first the shahud. Doesn't matter the middle. Because the second rak'ah of three rak'ah is not the middle, is it? <laughs> Matter, it's not the middle. So it is the first tashahud of uh, prayer has got two tashahud, that's the middle. So it makes it iftirash. Go ahead. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, My friend sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade me from squatting iqa like a dog. Okay, iqa of the dog has done it. There's two ways of doing it, you remember? The dog squatting, yes? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows it, yes? Don't shake your head if you don't know it. Say, I don't know it. The dog, and which is equivalent to the iqa of what? There's another one, an animal, the same or similar. It's been mentioned in the hadith. Let me show it to you. 
Hmm? That's right, the monk, very good. The monk, and he came to you under the chapter of tranquility in the Ruku. Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he forbade me to peck like the crow, like the, uh, like the uh, hen, and to make, uh, uh, to look, or to snatch, look like the fox, and to make it uh, like the monkey. Can you read that hadith? Page 4040 says to you, third paragraph. Abu Hurairah. Abu Hurairah radiallahu said, My close friend sallallahu alayhi wasallam forbade me from pecking in my prayer like a cockerel, from looking around like a fox, and from squatting like a monkey. The monkey is equivalent to the dog. <clears throat> and in another hadith, he sallallahu alayhi used to forbid the squatting of the devil. So now we know that squatting of the devil is like squatting of the dog. No. There's a note on Come the uh, uh, <clears throat> about the Abu Ubaidah and others said, It is when a man presses his buttocks against the ground, keeps his shins upright, and leans his hands on the ground the way a dog does. This is we, different. We've done that before, yes. yes. No. <clears throat> when he saw the Allah sat in Tashahud, <clears throat> He would place his right palm on his right thigh in one narration knee and his left palm on his left thigh in one narration knee, spreading it upon it. And he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would put the end of his right elbow on his right thigh. Uh, small note on, on that, the Buddha and Nasai with Sahih Sanat, it is as though the meaning is that he would not separate his elbow from his side, as Ibn al-Qayyim has uh, elucidated in Zadul Right, which is the un proper understanding. If you're now sitting for tashahud, I would like to, speak, brother, to demonstrate now. You're sitting for the tashahud, you're facing me. Now, put your two hands onto your thighs. Look now what he meant by this. When he puts his hand onto his thighs, uh, is his elbow, show his elbow, can't see your elbow. See that elbow, the end of it is parallel to our to your thigh. Doesn't mean you will not be feeling comfortable if you stick your elbow to the thigh. Can you try to stick your elbow to the thigh? You can't, can you? Yeah? It's very hard, isn't it? But it means that is to make the elbow in parallel to the thigh and not away from your side. That's what it means. So make them away, that's wrong. Make them to your body, that's correct. But not really like that, just normal. And don't press down to make it to reach the thigh, because you reach the thigh, you're gonna go like that. So, so the normal way. So if everybody sits the normal way, no you know, uh, acrobatic movements, just, and that's the, the way of the tashahud, it's gonna be inshallah. Right, go ahead. Also he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade a man who was sitting in prayer resting on his left hand and said, Verily, that is the prayer of the Jews. In one wording, do not sit like this, for indeed this is the way of sitting of those who are punished. In another hadith, it is the sitting posture of those who incurred Allah's anger. Right. Now, you will not be able to understand that unless you took it from somebody who took it from the scholars. I have, when I see that, in the prayer, you're not supposed to depend there when you are the shahad, you're not supposed to be the shahad, please. You're not supposed to lean on your hands in any way, whether the right or the left. Your hands, both of them, has to be where on top of what? The thigh. You're not supposed to put them on the ground. So if you put the right one on the ground, this is wrong. But if you put the left on the ground, this is not just wrong, it's also what? This is the maghdubi, this is the way that the prayer of the Jews. You say the one who's got the wrath of Allah on top of them. Now, can you put now the right, the left, the left hand onto the floor, please. See, that's the one. So if you do like this, this is how the people of the hell, the, the bones of being, they're going to be mu'adhabu, they're going to be talking in the hell fire. There's another narration, which is not just to do with the prayer, the way that you sit. So if now you sit and you're leaning back, lean back, please. No, no, with your hands. You want to lean back with your hands. Yes, that. So now, 
Look at that, brother. Can I just ask you to move so I could see him? Now open your two palms. Now those two palms, right and left, like that, this is not allowed. If you make it, you want to make it allowed because because he had opened the what? His palm. If you want to make it allowed, then you're not supposed the left one to be opened. So let's just make sure that we can see the one which is allowed and it's not the people who are being tortured in the hellfire. So the first one, you're going to be a fist with the right, sorry, fist with the left and open hand on the right. So that's number one, which is allowed. Number two, which is allowed, two fists. Number three, one fist of the right. No, no, no. One more than this right. And number five, open hand of the right. Number six, one fist of the left. And that's it. Which one is not allowed now to sit? Not in the prayer, this is the normal. This is the one which is, that is this, and regardless of the other hand, whether it's, if that yoga is open, then this is, and we have learned this from our scholars. So this is the people of the people of the hell. How? how? We don't know. Professor Zanavi said that. <clears throat> They're going to be like this in the hellfire. On the back, on the left. And the, they will be tortured like that. So, Allahu A'lam how. So in the prayer, you're not supposed to do the, depending on both, whether this or that, but you're going to add with your left, if you did it. Mm -hmm. This is the people of the Jews. Fine. We'll finish now, and uh, we're going to go to what we believe is that the right thing regarding the Fajr prayer. We, Shaykh al Albani, rahimahullah, he brings to us a number of hadith where he says that from it he believes that if the prayer is called one tashakul and it's the last tashakul. <coughs> Then it has to be iftirash not tawarruq. Just like the middle tashahud of a prayer has got more than one tashahud. The hadith that he brings, hadith Wa'ali ibn Hujr, which is hadith in Sunan al Nasa. I came to the Prophet وسلم, and I have seen him raising up his hand when he opens his prayer, which is the middle tashahud, until he was parallel to his, <coughs> his shoulders. <coughs> and if you want to bow, and if he wanted to bow, he would do the same thing, raise up his hands. And if he sat in the two raka, listen, if he sat in the two raka, he would sit on the left foot and he would put the right up. Which means what? If Tarash. <coughs> and if he sits in the two raka and he would put the right hand onto his right thigh and also he would make uh, his finger up for making the dua and he would put his left onto the left thigh. <coughs> and that's the hadith that the Sheikh al-Bani brings and he says from this hadith. And the hadith is a clear cut that the iftirash is in the prayer which is got <coughs> The two rak'ah, like the prayer of the Fajr. And the best of the Imams that implements this hadith is Imam Ahmad, then Abu Hanifa and Thawri. In contrast to Malik and Shafi, for Badali, they say that the Tawarruq, Tawarruq, Imam Malik says Tawarruq in all of them, whether it's the middle or the whole. But Shafi says, <coughs> Tawarruq in the Tashahud, if it is, one Tashahud at the end. And he said that this hadith refutes them. Now this hadith, for me, is not clear cut. This hadith talks about that if he sat in the two rak'ah. Now in the two rak'ah, there could be two rak'ah of four or two rak'ah with a finish. What is the proof for that? The following page. Ahmadullah Sheikh brings hadith Abi Hamid Sorry, that he was sitting with some companions of the Prophet and we started talking about the prayer. Abu Humayd al-Sa'id, he said, I was the one who knows and memorized the Salah of the Prophet of Allah 
I used to see him when he used to make takbir. I used to make his hands and power to his shoulders. And he makes rukur. And he would make his hands between his knees. And then he would flatten his back. And when he says Samia, and when he lifts up his head, he would stand up properly until all his joints becomes straight. And when he makes prostration, he would make his hand uh, 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 on, onto his, <clears throat> when he makes prostration, he would make his hands on top of his thighs. Uh, uh, so between the two sessions, sorry. And then when he is as well making his foot, it will be the toes again, towards the Qibla. He says that. فَإِذَا جَلَسَ فِي Again, if he sat in the two rak'ah, he would sit onto his left foot and his right would be up. So in the, when you see this, look, this is similar to that one. And he's making iftirash. But he continues. And if he sits in the last rak'ah, then he would make the tawarruq. So here in the sister of the two rak'ah, it's not clear there whether it's this two rak'ah is two rak'ah or four, or to rak'ah at an end. And that's why I said, Sheikh al albanis opinion, he put the Fajr there, that's what he believes. Now Imam Shafi'i, I have prayed next to a scholar. When I prayed next to him, I have seen him praying to rak'ah. I can't remember, was it uh, the Fajr or the Asr because it was a travel. And I believe it was the Dhuhr or the Asr. I believe, I can't remember, it was a long time. And he was a travel. And when I prayed next to him, I had noticed that he made the tawarruq. And I had a conversation with him regarding this issue. Where he had quoted Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, but he did not quote the hadith. And for me, because Sheikh al-Albani is more stronger than him than the hadith, Sheikh al-Albani is more of a scholar than him, I was not happy or relaxed to follow that opinion until I made a further investigation, that's a long time ago, and I looked. There is a hadith in Sunan al nasai and the Shaykh al-Albani did not tackle it. And the Shaykh, he had made it authentic, and I'm going to quote the hadith, which is in front of me, it's from the Shaykh al-Albani's book, Sahih Sunan al nasai Sahih Sunan al nasai The hadith says, عن أبي حميد الساعي which is the hadith that we talked about but it's a different one because it's an addition كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم and I'm reciting for those who are Arabic that's a clear cut hadith كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا كان في الركعتين اللتين تنقضي فيهما الصلاة أخر رجله اليسرى وقعد على شقه متوركا ثم سلم and that hadith is sahih. And this is why Imam Shafi'i had said to make tawarruq in the salah which was one tashahud, that is the last tashahud, which is the one tashahud. So basically, whether you are making a prayer of two tashahud, the last tashahud will be tawarruq, or you're making a prayer of one tashahud, then it's tawarruq. And the hadith here, translation of which, the Prophet of Allah, if he used to sit in the two rak'ah, if he used to sit in the two rak'ah, where the prayer is finished. Now that interpretation of that says two things. Either that is there is more than two rak'ah or more strongly that the two rak'ah which is it's only two rak'ah prayer. When I read this, I haven't changed my mind. I'm still with the Shaykh al I said, that is why the other scholar, he has a big proof. And I'm just saying this to my students. So if you have seen somebody did tawarruq in Fajr, and you told him what your proof is, which is good, but he came up with this, you have to understand he's got a what? A proof. Now, this one, it still can take two. It's clear cut, but can take two as well. And the Shaykh al-Albani, he uses the hadith of Wa'il ibn Hujr where he said that is when we have more than one tashahud. The first one will be tirash, the second one will be tawarruq. So that is what we call, as I say, uh, uh, that is difference among the scholars. 
which we will ad uh, appreciate uh, and is a considerable one. Imam Malik, he is wrong when he said Tawarraq in old, because we have seen iftirash clearly in the hadith. But Imam Malik, he had authenticated a hadith which is Muslim and Ahmad, which is unauthentic. And he made Tawarraq in all the rak'ah, which is unauthentic by, this, the, uh, by the grading of those scholars of hadith. So after I have just quoted to this to you, I am still with the Shaykh Rahmatullah Ali, I am adapting it, but I'm just saying to you, you might see some people doing Tawarraq in what? In the prayer of what? One tashahud. So if you've seen that, you say what you think is right. But if you came up with this strong proof, it is a strong proof. You have hadith, as I said, of number of, uh, uh, there's two hadiths, which is hadith Wa'il ibn Hujr, and this one, you could interpret it, be interpreted both ways. Sheikh al Albani has a bit more stronger argument. Wallahu alam. Now. Tawarruq in the Moving the finger in tashahud. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would spread his left palm on his left knee, clench, his, uh, clench all the fingers on his right hand, point with the finger adjacent to the thumb towards the qibla and fix his sight on it. That is the finger. And the note on this is Muslim Abu Awana and Ibn Khuzayma, Humaydi and Abu Ya'la added with a sahih sanad, uh, on the authority of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. And this is the shooting of the devil. No one will forget when he does this. And Humaydi raises his finger. Uh, Humaydi also said that Muslim bin Abi Maryam said, a man related to me that in a, in a church in Syria, he saw images of prophets depicted like this. And Humaydi raises his finger. And this is an extremely strange remark, but it's, it, it's son of, uh, up to the man is sahih. Right. Now we come to the point where we have also a difference among the scholars regarding the movement of the finger. Some of them, that is, they would move it only when there is tashahad. Shahad, which is la ilaha illallah. Some of them, they will add Muhammad Rasulullah. They'll move it. And based upon the Hanafi Madhab, if you make three movements in the prayer, the prayer is invalid. That's their principle. So you do it, Ashhadu la ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah. That's two movements and that's it. The, there's other scholars, they would make the tashahud from the beginning to the end, but, but not moving the finger, which is pointed towards. To the Qibla. So you could stick the finger like that, okay, and they will point it towards the Qibla. And we're going to show the as well uh, uh, the way to, to stick the fingers. I'm just going to be showing to you that the finger itself, like this. Some of them, <clears throat> they will make the movement from the beginning to the end, like that. And this is not. This is not called tahrik in Arabic. It's called khafd rafr. Khafd rafr. Up, down. Up, down. That's not right. The tahrik, which is we believe that's the correct opinion of is that movement. This is why it hasn't been noticed by a lot of companions. It's not that much. Number two, because the narrator is only uh, one, he narrated that the movement. And also, this will include two things, movement and pointing. There's a hadith which talks about pointing on its own. So the movement is an extra. And always we said that the rule goes to the one who gives you what? Extra. Always. This is a principle. As long as they don't contradict one another. So this one does not contradict the pointing. So this is pointing plus movement. There's a hadith which says, And he would not move it. That is unauthentic. So if you get rid of that hadith, which is, doesn't say that he cannot move it, then we are left with this hadith, which is that he moves and it's pointing. And when it's point, points towards the qibla. So don't do like this. That's not pointing towards the Qibla, it's pointing towards the ground. And don't do like that. 
And people who are there as well. That's not right as well. So the movement has to be towards the Qibla. You are stuck to the Qibla all the time. That's the direction of the Qibla. And that is the movement. Because if you do it like this, you are stuck to the Qibla. But if you did it like that, this is Sudan, Egypt, Qibla. Sudan, Egypt, Qibla. Coming from right to left, you know, Sami. You're not going to Qibla. Egypt, <laughs> You're going, to diff- you're going to different angles here. So this one is not right. It's not a movement. This one is called Tadwir. You know, our brothers from some of the Moroccans or Bajiris. This is called not Tahrir. It's called Tadwir. Tadwir means circle. That's circle. So people do like this. You've seen them, I'm sure. So that one, that's not right. That one is not right because not. And that one also is not right because Khaf Tafir. And we're going to see as well the way that to put the hands like that or like this. We're going to see it in a minute. But there's no way that you put your palm on top of your thigh and you do like this. You've seen some people do like this, isn't it? No? No. I have. I have people doing like this. I've seen this. Okay. I have seen like that as well. Have you seen like this? No. Haven't you seen like that? See like this. I have seen that. So I've seen like this. But the one that really almost made me laugh is not that one. And it's not that one. And it's not this one. No. There's one which I have seen it. He was doing his hand like this, when he sat to the shahri, he did like this. <laughs> that the one made me laugh. He's like pulling a gun. He did like this. <laughs> when he did like this, I almost laughed under the bed. <laughs> You know, you see people, lots of people, lots of things, <laughs> but this is the really, uh, I have seen people pulling their ears when they start the prayer. I've seen them doing like this and say, Shh, oh, come on, I've seen that. But this one is like a normal person to do. <laughs> I have seen a person, normally seen more than, more than once. I don't know if he's normal or not himself, but when he does the tashahud, you know, if you are next to him, for the first time, I think you can't help yourself laughing. You have to hold yourself. If you first see him the first time. Second time you get used to him. So when you are making the shahwah, you make the shahwah like this. You make the shahwah like that, isn't it? That's what he does. Like that. Do that is. Okay. You know, some people do like this, isn't it? People are yeah. like that. Yeah. You see that as well. Some people do like this. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Then, yes. yeah. But this person knows. <laughs> <laughs> Face. Uh, ah. He did like this. He <laughs> <laughs> looked at the other person like that. I don't know, that's normal person or not? I don't know. Allah Allah, but this is as well addition. You know, you see people. <laughs> so I've seen lots of people, I haven't seen that. So I've seen this one. I've seen it. But it's really a uh, neck king. Uh, your neck is not right. Uh, when the person does not understand how to do the prayer, when he does read the ahadith as well, he does not implement it by listening to the scholars what they say, then they end up doing like this. And this is to add as well to the jokes that we have seen. You see, the person in front of me, I can't remember, I am the, behind him with Rose, he's in the front, maybe the first one. And he's tall, mashallah. And while he's praying and the Imam is reciting, he did to his neighbor like this. <laughs> Ah. And I was, the neighbor of it did not do anything to him, I haven't done it there. He's patting him three times. Allah Musta. So, I mean, I, 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 where, where, where is the aqil? You are, you, you, so, you are actually spitting on the brother. So, when the Prophet Sallam, he said that if you are on the bed and you have seen a vision that is horrible one, dream, so not vision, dream. Horrible one where it's shaitan and you cut off head. What do you do? One of the things that you do after isti'ala from the shaitan three times, huh? and isti'ala from uh, in Allah from what you have seen three times, you spit three times on the left. Spitting on the left, you don't spit on the left, that means proper left. You might spit on your wife on the left. Then you end up in trouble. <laughs> the left is just slight movement to the left. That's a left. So left is like this, and left as well like that. For the women who don't see me, left is totally turning the left, as well left to what? Just like when you do that, the salutation. One of them, the salutation, is to make it on the right. How do you make the right? Slight turning like this. Assalamu alaikum. 
See? Assalamu alaikum. That's right. So you turn to the right, slide it. Assalamu alaikum. That's right. So this is right, and this is what? Right. So assalamu alaikum, the salutation. So we have to uh, take the implementation of the sunnah from the scholars because they are the ones who understand the Arabic language more than us. Right. Uh, the interpretation of the. Uh, uh, go ahead. Now he says here, can you read for me? Uh, I'll have an He had said, it's been narrated by Sahih Sanat Abdullah ibn Umar. He said, this is the Nudbatu Shaytan. That is, this is the thing that will make the Shaytan will not take your concentration. When you put your finger and you look, you lock your sight onto it, this will take any sort of uh, flying away or with your mind or remembering things when you look at it. And he said, when Asaf al-Humaydi usba'ah or isba'ahu, qal al-Humaydi, qal al-Muslim Nabi Maryam, wa haddathani rajul, and a man talked to him that he had seen the prophets, they were in the church of the, the prophet, the prophet, the image of the prophet, in the church of Bilal al-Sham, in their prayer, they were doing like this. So that means they were the tashahud. Allah. Who is that man? We don't know. Number two. Okay, we had this. And Ben Israel, what up? Hamj. No problem. Talk about this. As long as it doesn't go all against us, no problem. Let's talk about Ben Israel. And there's, no, there's no harm in it. As long as it does not really uh, uh, go against our principles. So if the image of those, uh, we know that in the Bible, that every time there is something for Isa al Salam to pray, he would work fell on his. Face. We know that for a fact. He turns on his face. What he's doing? He's prostrating. We've never heard or never read that he used to do like this. Have you? Have you read that? I mean, in the Father and the God. You, you haven't read that. Where is that coming from? It's not from Isa 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 does not pray by putting the name of the Father and the name of. No, he's falling on his face. So that's prostration. And the prayer, as I said, all the prophets prayed. All of them. And their prayer were much more than ours. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He put them with Muhammad, He make it lighter on us. When we said, وَلَا تُحَمِّلْنَا مَا لَا طَقَةَ This is in Surah Al-Baqarah, the last verse. وَلَا تُحَمِّلْنَا O Lord, don't overburden us with what we can't do. All the worship and obligations of Allah Azza wa Jal is less than your ultimate capability. You understand that? Your capability is much more than what you've been asked. Your capability can do 50 prayers a day. That's why Allah has imposed upon us what 50 prayers. If it was not within our capability, we would not be 50 prayers at the beginning. We are capable of doing 50. But Allah made it easy for us. But we are capable to do 50 prayers a day. That's within our capability. But Allah made it easy for us. So there was 50 before. So the prophets used to pray. It may be slight difference here and there, but you used to pray. There's ablution, and there is wudu, there's siyam, there's fasting, there's everything, there's hajj. Now, <clears throat> Also, when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pointed with his finger, he would put his thumb on his middle finger, and sometimes he would make a circle with these two. Right, so sometimes we'll put it on the, so the thumb and the middle finger. That's the thumb on the middle finger, like that. And some you would make what? A circle. So that's a circle, and that's not a circle. So you could do like this, like this, it's because you're putting it in the middle finger. Or sometimes you make that middle finger, you pull it back, and it makes what? A circle. So you could do like this, you could do like that. Both of them is correct. And you point, and you point towards the kibbutz. When he saw the Lassalam raised his finger, he would move it, supplicating with it. And he used to say, it is surely more powerful against the devil than iron, meaning the forefinger. Right, can you just now read me the footnote? <clears throat> About supplicating with it, Imam Tahawi rahimahullah said, this is evidence that he was at the end of the prayer. Hence, there is evidence in this that the sunnah is to continue pointing and moving, of, uh, uh, moving the finger until the taslim for the supplication is until then. This is the view of Malik and others. Imam Ahmed was asked, should a man point with his finger during prayer? He replied, yes, vigorously. And uh, now, 
we, we have to understand from this that the Prophet of Allah used to do in his middle tashahud what he used to do what in his last tashahud. I mean, it's not just tahiyatul lillahi wa salatu wa tayyibat without a salat al Ibrahim. You're wrong. Middle tashahud is like the last tashahud in terms of time wise and in terms of as well dua wise. So when he says, Kana yuharrikuha yadru biha, he's to make supplication with And we have heard from Aisha radiallahu anha, we've read from Aisha radiallahu anha, that in the Prophet Sallallahu prayer, <coughs> in, the, in, the, uh, the, in the, the witter prayer, when he made, for example, the nine rak'ah, he made the eighth like the ninth, meaning the middle tashahud like the last tashahud. So the two tashahud, and this is Shaykh al-Bayt, fa'idah, ubba alayhi bin nawaj, bite onto it. To make the first tashahud is like the second tashahud. Middle tashahud like the last tashahud. Now, from this it is clear that moving the finger in tashahud is a proven sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and it was practiced by Ahmed and other Imams of the Sunnah. Therefore, those who think that it is pointless and irrelevant, irrelevant. and uh, has nothing to do with the prayer should fear Allah since because of this they do not move their fingers although they know it to be an established sunnah. And they take great pains to interpret it in a way which is inconsistent with the Arabic way of expression and contrary to the understanding of the Imams with regards to it. The amazing thing is that <clears throat> some of them will defend an Imam on other issues even if his opinion conflicts with the Sunnah with the argument that to point out the Imam's mistakes inevitably means to taunt and disrespect him. They then forget this and reject this established sunnah, at the same time mocking it, mocking at those who practice it. Whether or not they real, realize it, their mockery also includes those imams whom they often defend wrongly and those and who are correct about the sunnah this time. In fact, they are uh, deriding the Prophet ﷺ himself, for he is the one who brought us the sunnah and so jeering at it is equivalent to jeering at him. And there's a translation uh, of the meaning of the verse. But what is the reward for those among you who behave like this? Except Not the reward, the punishment should be gone. Except. No. As for putting the finger down after pointing or limiting the movement to the affirmation of uh, saying La ilaha. Illallah um, and negation that uh, and illallah, illallah. Illallah. Uh, as of that has no basis in the Sunnah. In fact, it is contrary to the Sunnah, and uh, this hadith proves. We have explained. Go ahead. Further, the hadith that he, um, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would not move his finger does not have an authentic isnad, as I have explained in Daif Abi Dawood one seventy five. Even if it were authentic, it is negatory while the hadith above is affirmatory and the affirmatory takes precedence over the negatory as is well known among the scholars. Let me just explain this principle. Uh, this is hadith which says that the Prophet of Allah did not move his finger he is not authentic. He says that even if it's authentic, when we have a hadith says he used to do it and a hadith he did not used to do it, the hadith which says he used to do it takes precedence over the one who says he does not use it to do it. Why? Because affirmatory, he says, the one who affirms makes takes priority upon the one who negates. Because the one who affirms, he has extra knowledge. It is the hukum fazzad fazzad. <clears throat> so the person who had seen him moving, he had seen extra onto the one who had said, he had said him that he did not move. Do you understand me? Because that other person, he seen him moving it. So he seen something extra. So even if it's authentic, which is not, the principle will take it away because the one who affirms takes precedence of the one which negates. Now this is before we start talking about those people who take the mick out of those people who move their fingers. So, <clears throat> we find, for example, a big fight regarding this movement of the finger that 
when I was a, a younger person, I used to have more attacks than when I was older. When you were older and be known to be a knowledgeable person, then the people would be scared to talk to you. But if you are vulnerable with no knowledge and young, especially the old people will, you know. So when I used to teach my students, they used to, for example, move their fingers <clears throat> and you move it like this. So the person who doesn't like this, he would start yelling at that boy. Why do you do this? Who told you to do that? But when it comes to me, when I go to decide the same person who complains, one of them, an old man who died, may Allah mercy upon him, he said, you know, that's the good movement of yours. He said, this is really right. Because, you know, that doesn't irritate me. But those people are hitting me who like this. <laughs> now, I think he's exaggerating himself. But maybe there are people who does like this. Which is not like this. This is different. This is different. Number two. Some people, because of their lack of Iman, they start implement their, what they call logic, onto what is coming from Allah and His Messenger. If it doesn't go along what is the logic for them, they will reject it. Do you understand that? They don't know they're rejecting Allah and His Messenger. Because if they know, then they will be go far. But they don't know. They think, no, no, you're wrong, you're wrong. Prophet did not do it. Prophet of Allah, he said, this is more punishable, harmful, onto the shaitan than the iron bar. That means if you hit him with an iron bar, this is more punishable. I have, from this platform, long time ago, narrated a story, which I would like to write again, <coughs> from Sheikh Izzat Khabar, Abu Abdullah, he talked to me directly. So it is, which we call it high chain. High Isnad. From the Shaykh Izzat Khabar, the one who had washed the Shaykh Al-Bani, Rahmatullahi, and the Shaykh Al-Bani, whom he said, Sadiqi Al-Mukhlis, the sincere friend of mine. Shaykh Al-Bani says about this man who had married, remember, four women, and he had 40 kids, four zero, 40 kids. The Shaykh, he talked to me himself, from his mouth to my ear, and I could remember him standing in front of me, and he told me about this. That, it is a person whom he knows. Salafi, Sheikh, he works in one of those companies which are located on the Dead Sea. <coughs> now, most of the ones who work in the company are Muslims. And they do have, in those big companies, big musallah. Just like an electricity company, they have a big musallah. I used to go there, for example, when I paid my bills or something, and then I would lead the prayer, big musallah they had. So this company is called Big Musallah, and usually it is the case that the people there, they will, you know, make the one who is closer to the Sunnah, more knowledgeable, is the one to lead. Regardless whether it is loud recitation or silent recitation. Dhuhr or Asr, which is, most of it is Dhuhr and Asr, because after that they will go home. So the person has got beards, got thobe, and other, they will lead, they lead. By the way, you're allowed to work with your thobe there, no problem. Some of the companies are not allowed. So, they will always ask the sheikh to lead the prayer. Now, this is now a manager. I don't know the story of the manager. Is a new one or not a new one? But the manager, <clears throat> the head of the company, he also prays. He prayed behind the sheikh. So he saw the sheikh, you know, moving his finger, which he hasn't practiced, never taught, doesn't know it. He saw him moving the finger like that. Now, when you see something which you don't know, you always have the stand of, enmity towards it. Man jahila shay'an a'adha. This is a principle. If you don't know something, if you are ignorant about something, you will take uh, adawa, enmity, animosity towards it. You don't like it because it's a new thing. But he was not confident enough to confront the sheikh. So he sent his secretary, the one who works for him, to ask the sheikh, why does he move his finger? I mean, we move our fingers, ashhadu la ilaha illa which I learned when I was a kid from my mother. Just on the shahada, ashhadu la ilaha illa wa ashhadu Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's it. No movement of the finger. I think my mother, she was a Harbi, she doesn't know about that. <laughs> so the secretary came to the sheikh, and the sheikh explained to him exactly what we have in the book. He said to him, "This is what the Prophet sallallahu used to do, and from the beginning to the end of the tashahhud." And he said as well that is, it is worse on the shaitan than the iron bar. The secretary went to the the head of the company, and he told him what he had heard. Now that person, instead of taking that and adapting it and digesting it, he 
could digest it. He now is implementing his logic on top of the Sharia. He said, this is worse on the Sextan than the iron bar. What is he talking about? Because he's using his logic. I mean, this, what is he going to do to the Shaitan? The iron bar? It's nonsense. So the secretary, somehow, he conveyed the words of the manager to that sheikh. Now the sheikh, he had used the same thing that Abu Bakr had used <laughs> when that person started messing about with the sharia. Before he embraced Islam, he said to the Prophet of Allah, you know, when we fight you, those street guys, by the Shawar, street guys, like tag, they will leave you, talking about the companion. He said to him, Om Sus-Badr Let the gen- lick the genitals of your God, this. That's what he said. Om Sus-Badr Let. Badr means the clitoris of that goddess of yours. It was a very rude word. And the Prophet didn't say anything to the book. He didn't say what well, a rude person you are. That word deserves it. What are you talking about? We're going to leave the Prophet So this Shaykh had used this. So he said to him, he is taking the mikah with the Prophet and he had pointed with his finger, I'm not going to do it, I don't care about him. Now the secretary, of course he will not convey such a thing because he knows it's going to be what? The, it's going to be chucked out, <laughs> the sheikh. So, but he insisted the manager. Later on he met him, the secretary, what did he say to the sheikh? Um, I'm telling you, what did he say? I'm not going to tell you. He said, what did he say? So he told him, he said to you, like this. Now, if he say that to somebody like this, what happens there? Now, Rabbi Sheikh, what happens? Oh, it's a fight. He might shoot you with that. Hey, he has said, I'm his rude person. I didn't know that he's a sheikh. He's not a sheikh. He's a sheikh. How can you say like this? I'm, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to call him. So you call him. How dare you say like this? And he was shouting. And the sheikh is laughing. He said, look, one finger had done to you. So what does that then do to the shaitan? <laughs> he convinced him logically. It's one finger, he said, just one finger. If somebody said that this is more, huh, one finger, onto you half of the iron bar, huh, you would not accept it until you saw it in your own eyes. One finger. I did not do it like one, two, three, four. So logically, imagine that this one is equivalent to mine to you. You don't know Allah when He says like this will irritate the shaitan. It will irritate him. So we submit. So if I, if I go to another culture and I said that this person I did like this to him, he jumped up and down. Do you, do you think, why is he jumping up and down? He doesn't know what is the meaning of this to us in our community. He doesn't understand that. I think in Pakistan is the whole hand. Uh, it differs from one culture to another. So this is shaitan. We don't know how Allah has created him. We don't know. So he's edited from that finger. We need to submit. Now we're going to use that in the prayer, whether he likes it or not. And we don't say why. Because this is ibadah la tu'adah. This is a worship which cannot have a why. It hasn't got a hikm that we could see. This is pure ibadah. Just like for rak'ah more. Do we know it's for rak'ah? Why is it rak'ah We don't know. Why? We don't know. We submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stop here, inshallah, and we continue with next week. Oh, no, no, finish, 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 finish. Yeah, just let me finish it. <clears throat> also, the companions of the Prophet وسلم, used to remind each other that uh, that is about pointing with the finger when supplicating. So, subhanAllah, they used to remind each other. Isha, this is the one. Go on. Once he وسلم, saw a man supplicating with two fingers, so he said, Make it one. Make have it you one. seen somebody? I have. Yeah. A person with two hands. Have you seen it? Let's see what they're doing. Kids. Yeah, kids don't do that normally. And indicated uh, with four ahad, fingers. Ahad, one, one. And he saw وسلم, would do this in both the shells. Okay, it's like Allah khairan, and we have the questions. Yeah. 
providing the right and having this additional connection. Do you think that the more trigger is how much it is? Because people didn't know this was a factor. So you say that, well, why don't we raise up the hands in the uh, uh, why don't we use the same principle that when we say that the raising of the hands here, that in every movement, that person is in every movement, and another person is just in that movement. Whereas, uh, the, when we said about the moving of the fingers, we said that this is person who had said one move that does not move it, not that like you just pointed, and the other one he said he pointed and moved, and we took the extra. Why don't we take the extra all the time as well? The reason is two. Number one is that the one who had narrated regarding the takbirat al raising of the hands, that is, which is that is he had done uh, raising of the hands in some of the movement, very few, one or two or three. But the ones who are tens, almost hundred, regarding the prayer of the Prophet of Allah, where he raised up the hands in three position and a fourth as well. Three position, get haram to go rukua, up from the rukua, that's three, and the fourth one, which is one from the going from the second to the third. And the rest, some of the companions noted that. So when those companions, when they said, we're going to describe to you to the prayer of the Prophet to the latter, they did not use that movement. And the other one used to move, so we say now we do this and we do that. The other ones, when we said, they, not all of them they said that he does not, you know, only one person he said he is pointed, Another person, he said, he moved. It's not lots of people who said he pointed, he pointed, he pointed. And this one, he said, he moved. If it is the case, then we say, yes, we sometimes we move, and sometimes we don't move. Because lots of companions said he did not move it. But this one, he said, he pointed. And the other one, he said, moved. So to combine between the two, movement and pointing is the same thing. So if he had moved and he pointed, he had fulfilled both hands. Because the one who said he pointed, he did not say he did not move. He had described that point. This is the, so from the, number one, the contradictions of it. Number two, from the number of the narrators. And what you have implemented from your brain is really correct, but not in this scenario. Because we said, there is the hands. So many companions describe that. It's not only one or one. So many companions. And they have said, we have got to describe the Prophet of Allah that like you are seeing. It. Very few had said that they used to do between the two sajda. Maybe one. Abdullah ibn Umar. Not very few had said, for example, between uh, the, uh, after the sajda, or the first sajda. Not a lot. One. But the other ones, too many. They were doing it. Wallahu a'ala. Jazakallah khairan for that question. So the, the iqa of uh, sitting between the sajda, um, I'm trying to recollect from our studies in Fiqh Sunnah. The second rakah of Fajr or the last Tashahud when there is only one, um, we sit in Iqa as well. Is, it, is that an option? No, the Iqa is only for between the two Sajda. There is no Iqa in the Tashahud. Okay. The iqa is only between the two Sajda. Now. So if somebody had closed the finger, this is really a question. What is that? He's not opening the whole palm. I mean, if a person did like this, a person who looking at him, would, would, would he say that he is different from the one who's doing like this? I don't think so. So this is will not get away with it. So we don't want to go out. Okay, so what about one finger? What about half a finger? Why, why should we do that? Keep as far as you can from the haram. So that's one finger is equivalent to two fingers, equivalent to five fingers. We say, when you see a person like this, and you describe him, so an open palm or closed palm? Open palm. But he said, like this, which is not fully like this, and we just see him with a fist. It's not really open, because I could see it's closed. But this one is open. This is where the fuqaha, for example, the Imam Shafi'i follows, the guy in the Mas'ala Ras. Must have a last one that the Prophet said, he did like this. Okay, if you have the two hands. You could, as well, if you have probably have one hand, inshallah, one go. But when you go to the fiqh, which is not needed, it's not needed. One finger is enough. Why do we need that? <laughs> Why do we need to go to the one finger? Yeah, one finger, must have finger. Why do we need that? 
So that is the to remind you of your fingers here. Yeah? One finger. Now, follow. Where is the evidence here? He says here. وَكَانَ رَفَعَ إِسْبَعَهُ You don't understand the English there or not? He said when he raised his finger. Yeah. So when the first raised his finger, you know some people say he raised it. You mean uh, when, when to start? Yeah, no. When he used to sit, he used to raise his finger. There's no, no support to you that the words will need to shackle. There's no support for you at all. So he used to raise his finger because this is an action in itself, which is the Jalus for Tashah. It's different from between the Jalsa. Okay? So when you want to do it in the Tashah or before, you need a proof. But for this, you don't need a proof because he used to sit and move, put. If you want to make it at a specific, specific time, you need extra proof. Okay? So this is, we call it Al Asl. This is the origin. And he, this is Tashah. He used to put his finger. Now. You could ask me why the, uh, she, the Imams, Abu Hanifa and others, used to say the Tashahur, because of Athar, which is unauthentic. Athar, from the companion, which is not authentic. That's why they used to make it on the Tashahur. Now, hold on a second. Ahmed? When you follow an Imam and he's on his. Follow Imam or Imam? Imam. On the second Tashahur, he's on his second Tashahur, so you join late. Do you sit like him? When the person is joining the Imam at any point of his prayer, that is considered for him the beginning of his prayer. Do you understand that? And he should be doing what the Imam is doing. So if, for example, you have a right in Salat al-Isha, in the third rak'ah, the third rak'ah, is it silent or audible for the Imam? Silent. You are going to be doing the what? what? First of yours. Do you do it silent or audible with the Imam? Silent. Why? Because of? If you are on your own, you will do it what? Audible. <coughs> so if you do that silent with the Imam because of the Imam, if he had now sat in the Tawarruq, in the second Tashahud, he looked at asking. He sat Tawarruq, what should you sit? The same as the Imam. Tawarruq. You sit. Did you ask him that question? You sit just like the Imam. imam You will be coming, for example, in the last rakah. In the last rakah, he's going to be sitting. And you're supposed to go up to stand because it's the second rakah. So it's the first rakah. You're not supposed to sit. But you sit because of what? Imam. And you make tashahud, you don't make tashahud. Even though that you are not tashahud here for you. You make the shahad. <laughs> just because you're making the shahad, just make it so you follow the Imam. Inna majrila ibn Now, any question on the side? Fadal. Between two and each rakah? You mean between the sajda? Yes, between the sajda. Between the sajda. <coughs> You've seen brothers between the sajdas they would raise up their finger. Um, <clears throat> that's a very good question. <clears throat> and the Sheikh Al-Albani talked about it and it's sincere. <clears throat> and it is a hadith which is not authentic. That the Sheikh, which he talks about, and he uses it as well, as we remember when we said the same argument regarding what happened on the left where? After the left. Remember we talked about that? And that is, whenever he sits, he would point. Do you remember that? We have, and they use the same argument whenever he sits. Whenever he sits. <coughs> so we say the same thing here. This is a general statement. We have how many ahadith? This is what to answer the question as yours well. How many ahadith regarding the prayer of the Prophet? There's so many. This kind of so many. To the extent that the Shaykh al Mali said. Sifatu Salat al-Nabi, scripture of the prayer of the Prophet Min al-Takbir al-Taslim, from the Takbir al-Taslim, Ka'an maka tawar, it's like you see, that means it's in details. To the details. Why? Because too many ahadith. From the companions, we got them. If all these companions, none of them, none of them, had said 
that the Prophet of Allah between the two sajda had raised up his finger. So that narration which says, فَكَانَ إِذَا جَلَسَ رَخَعَ Whenever he sits, I was to answer your question, well, what is it? He is to point. That julus, is it the, between the jalsa or julus of tashahud? There is another jalsa, just at least raha. The sitting of the rest before you go to the second raha. Do you understand that? Do we raise up the finger again? Like you said, so every jalsa, where is that? Because this is a general. If you implement the general on something which the companions never had done, never had narrated, you're making a bit of happy. And that's where the bid'ah comes from. What's the bid'ah? You know, any bid'ah in the world, religious bid'ah, it doesn't have proof or not. If it doesn't have proof, it's not a bid'ah. It has to have a proof. But the proof was not implemented by the Prophet. Even the one who shake their heads, Allah, Allah, not a proof actually. Nikrullah, yeah, actually, Nikrullah, is with the remembrance of Allah, heart will tranquil itself. So, the remembrance of Allah, general. Allah. Allah. So, general. That's a bid'ah, ya Why is it bid'ah? Well, because the Prophet of Allah can not do it. Same thing with this figure. You got general statement. You gotta use that general statement for something. But we have hundreds of them. None of them said it. The Prophet of Allah between the two judges. And you know between the two sajda, in terms of time-wise, equivalent to the what? To the sajda. So it's not like a simple one going down. No, 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 it's a long one. So in that sajda of his during the night prayer, which is equivalent to Al-Baqarah and al Imran and Nisa, you know how long it is? About an hour between the two sajda. No, no. And if he, did, he was raising up his finger, none of the companions, away from the Yaman, he was praying, but he didn't come back to us, he was pointing his finger there, you know, all the time in there. He would have said that. He would have said that. SubhanAllah. So I would say to the brothers, please, look properly. Don't be stubborn. This is stubbornness, believe me. When they look with their own eyes, if you don't have a hadith which is authentic regarding this, <clears throat> Then you are doing a bid'ah. One of the sh- uh, students of knowledge, the Shaykh al Albani, when he had made this book, and he wrote this uh, hadith regarding the issue of the tashahud between the men, and he said, I don't want anybody now to come to me and say that there is as well somebody raising up the fingers between the two sajda. He was talking about the right and the left. He said, Until one day, there was guests coming to me, three of them, and <clears throat> Because he's more humble than me, I need him to lead the prayer in my house. And he led the prayer. And he was what? Moving between the two sessions. How did I know? Because his student, he was next to me, Sheikh Allah, says, he was moving his <coughs> thing between the two sessions. So after that, Sheikh Allah, of course, the discussion. So he asked him. So he said, that knowledgeable person, he had something which Normally, the other ones did not bring about. He did not use the general statement. He used a specific statement. But the Shaykh pointed out for him, in Muslim and Ahmad, that's not authentic. So when that specific statement fell, then the whole fiqh of it would fall down. He did not use the general one. So the general one, to implement it in things like, I, for example, now, you know, talking about the deen, you know that the scholars, our respected scholars from the Najd, Saudi Arabia, they say you're not allowed to touch the beard. You know that yeah. the beard has to be firulia. And the Sheikh al he says that's not right because as well, the Rabbi Hadith Abu Bakr ibn Umar, he's the one who had made this hadith, who had narrated this hadith, and he is strict to the Sunnah. It's not any companion. Boy, remember, it's not any companion. He was strict to the Sunnah. And so if he himself used to take from the Qabr, like this, he would do from the Qabr. Of course, when you do like that. You know that these are longer than the Qabr, these, the one on the side. Look, look how long it's on the Qabr. Why? Because you put it this way, so this one will be longer, but this one will be from the chin, the same Qabr of yours. So, Shukhti say that you're not supposed to touch it. 
Particularly when you say business as well, not right. And I'm going to show you now something that tells me, come on, brothers, is this a beard? Look at this. Everybody, please have a look at this, which has been sent to me. Jazakallah khaira. After seeing this, I said, Jazakallah khaira, Sheikh al Wallahi. That is absolutely right. Okay, hang on a second, guys. Hang on a second, please. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. <coughs> What's up? Images? Yes. Look at it. Is it normal? Is it normal? Is it normal? Look. Look. Look at his beard. To his, yeah, not his knees, his feet. Yeah. Uh, that's an image of the bridge, a bit of Hans Lunch, which is five meters long. I mean, how does a man that sleeps? He might suffocate his wife, his husband, this is. <laughs> While she's sleeping, he might suffocate. If you're wrapped up. Yes, you know, you have to put in a carrier bag and, and keep it because it's really hazardous. <laughs> and this person as well, he's in the mustache beautiful as well. Doesn't matter. Now, you have any questions, Father? Who is that? Uncle? Yeah, Uncle. Oh, how are you, Uncle? MashaAllah, I haven't seen you for a long time. Today I have remembered you, SubhanAllah. Today I remembered you that whereas uncle haven't seen you for a long time, I've seen you today, and mashallah. This I haven't seen you, mashallah, alhamdulillah. A question you a person hasn't asked, and please benefit your question. Father, let me. Okay, why would you say, require a very important means of faith before you get Sometimes when you say that, and it's important to figure the Quran. No, no. In the Tawarq, we haven't done the Tawarq. So you're not giving something we haven't done yet. The Tawarq has two ways. Not according to the Qibla, and one which is not according to the Qibla. We haven't discussed the Tawarq yet. Tawarru, we're going to discuss it and how to put it. And the, 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 the toes can be to the Qibla and could be what? Mm -hmm. Not to the Qibla, bent. So that will be helping you, inshallah. Fadl. When you join the Salah behind the Imam and the Dajjah, how long do you keep your finger moving? Is that when you start to sneeze or you finish the sneeze? Okay. Uh, how far do I go with my raising of the finger? Is it up to the salutation of the Imam? Or up to my finishing of the uh, of the tashahud. Like for example, I finish my tashahud before the imam. Do I stop? No, you don't stop because when you finish, you're still following whom? So if you are a person came and you are not supposed to make tashahud, you came when the first last rakah of his, it's your first rakah. You make him tashahud, don't you? So you raise up your finger because of you are not tashahud because of his. So you keep doing it. Now he says, what about the imam made salutation? And I make him something right. Why is making salutation? Do I move my finger or do I stop? I'm asking now. Does the Imam, when he moves his head, does he move or he's supposed to be stopped? So if you stop, you stop with him. So you go with the Imam. If you stop, you stop with him. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam.